And to get straight into it, let me welcome once again Abhishek Arunoma. Gentlemen, take it over. Just talk about what was the idea behind this book. So, um, for a long time, uh, Abhishek and I, when we worked together in Trade Country, or even before that, we had always talked about this particular partnership and uh, what a wonderful partnership it was. And it was not only uh, remarkable innings by both, but it was against excellent bowling from a like situation which cannot be worse. And uh, remember, they had been bowled over for 166 in the previous match and they were 59 for five. So they had lost about 25 wickets for 224 runs in the uh, days leading to it. So, and uh, the bowling attack was Donald, Ola, Klusner, and Matt Miller. And whenever we talked about it, and also Paul Adams for, for that matter, uh, and whenever we talked about it, uh, we uh, used to discuss that if it was played by say a couple of Englishmen, there would have been several books written about it. And it's a pity that our uh, cricket is not that well documented. There's a line, gentlemen, at the start or the first part of the book where you rightly say that beyond avoiding an Indian defeat or the follow on, this did little much as per the scorecard goes. But we both, we all three of us know that it was such, it was so much more than that. A counter attack of this magnitude when you're five wickets down after being bowled out, like you said, Arunava, for 166. I mean, Alan, Alan Donald taking those wickets are still like imprinted in my mind. While someone who might happen to come across the scorecard will say, yeah, but look at the margin um, of, of how the match ended. But for us watching it and us who have now gone, we have the hindsight of going back and watching it on, on YouTube. It was not about the defeat. The end, the end result was pushed so far back um, because what these two players were doing. And you also touched about how their relationship was also not at the best when they were out there in the middle. But that is what sport does. It sets aside the differences and it allows two batsmen, one at the almost at the, at the peak of his powers and one sort of nearing the crossroads to put aside any difference and do something for the country, right? Um, a, a few days ago, Azhar was asked a question on Twitter, um, something around what were you discussing? So he, was, yeah. he just, um, uh, during the partnership in the middle, so he said there was not much discussion. We were only hitting boundaries. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the stories that kept surfacing on media, Azhar being sacked as captain, Tindulkar becoming a new captain, and then Azhar's attitude in Eden, at Eden Gardens was questioned. And then Azhar responded with a hundred. It um, and even after that hundred, Azhar got criticism because it was portrayed. Uh, it was seen as a desperate counter attack. But then the hundred that followed in Kanpur, that there Azhar was in complete control, and those doubts began to go go away. If you remember the media reports in the just uh, after the uh, after India beat South Africa at home, the Kanpur hundred. Uh, the other such in rift uh, uh, rift report started to fade away, mm -hmm. and, uh, but they were there. I mean, you could see. I mean, I, uh, at that point, with limited access, no social media. I mean, we didn't even know whom to believe. There were reports were uh, contradicting each other. So. But there, but uh, there were definite rifts of humor, uh, rumors of rifts. So, uh, which makes the uh, partnership even more incredible. Yeah. Just for our viewers today, can you just set the tone for what? Yes, we know the scorecard. We we know where the series were, but the lineup that India and especially Azhar and Sachin had to had to conquer and survive against that day. We're in the middle right now, or we're in, in the latter part of an ongoing series in South Africa right now, where the likes of Kagiso Rabada, Marco Jansen, Dwayne Olivier, uh, Vian Mulder, Lungi Nigiri, they have bowled well in one test match, which India won. Then in the second test, barring that one change, this attack again brought out old memories of, of India's frailties. Of course, often unfair to compare eras, but that attack that South Africa had in 1996. So people who are not quite aware of what it was. Can you just shed some light on that, please, gentlemen? So um, if we talk about Donald and Pollock, that was an opening uh, combination with the 
like fast bowling combination, uh, the likes of which have been seen very, very rarely. And we give a total statistical breakdown breakdown of uh, exactly how good they were. Um, Donald was obviously one of the greatest bowlers of his time and of any time for it, for that matter. Uh, Pollock likewise. And uh, there was Klusner, who was at the beginning of his career, and he was a really good bowler at that time. Macmillan was always handy and more than handy. Like, he would have walked into any Indian side at that time, definitely, if not others. <laughs> uh, Paul Adams, uh, the left-arm spinner, left-arm uh, wrist spinner. Uh, first of all, his bowling action make, made it, uh, like, tremendously exciting just watching him and wondering whether he you take a tumble or not. Uh, but uh, apart from that, if we look at the figures, he is the most successful wrist spinner against India. One of the most successful wrist spinners against India is more successful than uh, someone like Abdul Qadir or Shane Warne. So it was a tremendous attack. Like uh, all these uh, lesser mortals like Azar and Tendulkar were different. They could score off good balls. And that's what made these innings special. But uh, people who waited for the bad balls, you know, who waited to tire the bowlers out and get bad balls, like see the good bowlers out and wait for the like lesser bowlers. There was no lesser bowler out there for them to take advantage of. It was relentless. The attack was relentless. So that was something like South Africa still have a good attack and all through they have had brilliant attacks, but that was right up there with the very best. I'm going to put you on the spot, each of you, for the final question, because the final question is linked back to the title of your book. Pick one shot from each batsman from that innings, which has stayed with you. Just one shot, fatafat, one shot. That Azhar's, Azhar's absurd hook of Donald. Arun, I was just mentioned. You uh, uh, should watch. If you watch it on YouTube, you uh, you sh have to see Donald's expression after that shot. He was left clueless. I, I, that expression can. I mean, that expression tells it all. Um, he hooked Donald, who had been frightening throughout that tour, off almost of the front foot in front of square and found the gap. It was an absurd shot. I mean, I'm saying it absurd. Donald's expression told it even more. I'm uh, you don't get to see a shot like that. Yeah, yeah. And about Tendulkar, know. yeah, with Tendulkar, uh, there was all the uh, like he was batting with the tail and uh, the stroke with which he got to his 150. You know, uh, the Donald was bowling with the new ball and it was perfectly paced, good length and uh, not much room. He just freed his arms. He just played the cover drive. And it just, the next thing we saw, it was uh, rebounding from the you know, advertisement holdings. And uh, you talk about Tintulkar, he could make these in incredible shots uh, seem quite normal. It's, uh, it was uh, his uh, special ability. But even then, this... This was quite incredible because, um, yeah, because of the situation, he just let himself go. And uh, the problem with Donald was that he couldn't even sledge at the non striker end because Dota Ganesh, he didn't speak English. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what... Uh, <laughs> uh, now he is quite articulate, but uh, at that time, uh, he didn't even speak... So much from the or... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> So Tendulkar uh, actually Fantastic. told him that uh, if you want to if you want to sledge him, you just uh, have to learn Kannada. 